So we're at lesson 23. So tonight we're, we're talking and learning about giving. And as Christians, giving back. Not the transactional bit, but just giving. Telling people about your own healing and your own progress. So you've all seen the poster with the 12 steps and the eight principles. And we are now at the last principle and the last step. Principle eight is yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and my words. And step 12, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So, easy stuff, right? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> What's this? No, 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 Janet, this isn't easy. Yes, it is. Now, you may recall that Jesus told his crew when they had hung out with him enough, and they'd been listening to him and studying with him a lot, he told his crew to get out and practice. He said, I'm giving you authority, go out and proclaim as you go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Remember that? And then he told them, report back in a couple of days. And there were a couple of rounds of that that we remember in the gospel. So God wants us to share what he's given us. So what has God done for you? There's a whole list of ideas and thankfulness come to mind. Are you thinking, uh... God has drawn you to this recovery program. It wasn't your idea. You think it was. But here you are. That's part of God's plan for you to be here. And God wants to help you with your hurts and habits and hang-ups and addic afflictions and addictions. And we all have a collection of those, don't we? Yes? This is yes? Yeah? Yeah? But you're thinking, well, wait a second, I became a Christian. How come there wasn't a magic wand waved above my head and poof, I'm recovered and perfect? Well, you realize that's not the way it works. You are in the process of changing and being changed. And there's a word for that that starts with S. Sanctification. Yes, we could call this uh, celebrate sanctification instead of celebrate recovery. Same thing. You are becoming more like Jesus. Whoa, Janet, that's a big imagining there. That's quite a stretch. Well... It just shows you there's progress to be made. Jesus used metaphors to teach. He used the image of water and flowing water in his teaching. Water represents the spirit working in you. You might be wondering, what does that have to do with giving? Well, remember when Jesus was left alone at the well and the Samaritan woman came along and he said, give me a drink of water? And she sort of went... Why are you, a Jew, asking me, a Samaritan woman, to give you some water? I mean, I, you think I'm unclean. That was the whole impression. And he, he had some interesting fun with her. But one of the things Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So she still thinks he's talking about water. He's talking about the Spirit. He's talking about himself. So it's, it's supposed to be a flow that the Spirit, the energy of God is supposed to be in us, but it's not supposed to be stuck. It's supposed to flow through. And there's where we come to our ideas of giving. So are you blocking the Spirit in you? Is the level of the water kind of low? 
kind of dry, needs some inflow. Have you allowed the water of the Spirit to be all gunked up with your junk, your garbage, your trash? Are you hanging on to your burdens and your issues? And, or is it just stagnant, not moving, so that stuff you don't need grows? Jesus picked a brilliant metaphor when he talked about water as the Spirit. So, remember what John said, quoting Jesus, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Notice the word flow. That means it's not stuck. It's not stagnant. It's moving. It's supposed to through you and out into the world. So tonight we're focusing on principle 8 and step 12. It's about carrying the message, sharing with others, giving back. Now, I have to just remind some of you, giving does not mean unhealthy giving. It doesn't mean being stuck in codependent behaviors and relationships. That's not the kind of giving we're talking. It's not about giving and expecting something back, because that's a trap that you would lay for yourself. This is about the kind of giving that is just allowing what God has done for you to go out into the world in what you say and how you are. As Jesus said, freely you have received. Freely, yes. So now we come to our fabulous California acrostic, which is on your lesson sheet on your clipboard. So fill it in if you like as we go through and then you have something to think about later on. Give is the acrostic. The first one, the G, is God first. And that's because God gave first, the first giver. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? So God gave his son, or to, you could say Jesus gave himself on the cross. Everything you have is a gift from God. Your body is a gift from God because it's made of atoms that God made and is sustaining at this moment because if he wasn't sustaining those atoms, poof, you'd be gone. God created and sustains the atoms of the roof above us the floor below us, the chair you're sitting on, the snow that's going to come, all of these things are things that God made. Everything. That ought to be cause for gratitude right there. Because instead of nothing, there's something, and you are in it. Your recovery is built upon your faith and your desire to follow Jesus Christ's direction. Now, follow his direction versus trying to do it all yourself. If you notice that that doesn't work very well? Well, I'll just do it all myself. I don't like to delegate. Because if I delegate, whoever I delegate it to doesn't do as good a job as I would do. And if any of you are in any kind of management or even marriages and parenting, you know about it's sometimes hard to delegate because you just want it to be done right. But that doesn't work when God wants to help you. So, we are becoming givers. That's part of our process. We're becoming givers like God. That's what Jesus did for us. He gave us the greatest gift of all, himself. And that brings us to the next in the acrostic, the I. I becomes we. Hmm. The road to recovery is not meant to be traveled alone. Although there's always a few people who think of themselves as, I'm a loner. And that doesn't work, as you've noticed. 
And when we're talking about I become, there's that wonderful quote from Ecclesiastes, two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up or her. But if someone is alone, there is no one to help him. Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. Wisdom that's 3,000 years old, and it's just as relevant today. So when you think of that, I becomes we. Remember the rich young guy came to Jesus and he said, Master, what should I do to be saved? And Jesus said, well, you know, obey the commandments. Oh, I do all of that. And then somebody else came to Jesus on another occasion and said, what's their greatest commandment? They were trying to trick him, I think. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Please point to a few neighbors around here. Part of the mind says, well, yeah, maybe, but not that person that lives next door to me or something like that. That's not my neighbor. So this brings up considering how do you relate to others on a daily basis as I becomes we. When is it appropriate to give to be other-focused? And when do you get stuck in give, give, give only? This is someone... You know, in a positive sense, the you in the middle might be you as the ER doctor, and you are giving, giving, giving to the people around you because that's your role. That's a good thing. But what if this is giving, giving, giving to someone who's taking, 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 and perhaps you're enabling them or they're taking advantage of you? You get the difference? And... Here's another one. There's you in the middle. And other people are giving, giving, giving to you, and you're taking, 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 taking. Sometimes that's appropriate. If they're singing happy birthday to you, they're focused on you. It's celebrating you. Or if you've arrived at the ER with something that needs to be stitched up, it's good that the people in the ER are giving, giving, giving to you. But what if... You've got issues, and people are helping you, and you're taking, 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 taking. They pay for things, they give you things, and you don't give anything back. That's unbalanced, isn't it? So you get a sense that giving and receiving, there's a kind of flow where there should be. And here's the ideal in your close relationships, your friends, and maybe good work colleagues or family members, where there's a good balance of mutual interest and support, you're giving and they're giving. Another way to think about this one, where you're giving out, perhaps that's you sitting next to two people in an airplane, and you have two audiences that can't get away for a couple of hours. And they say, what do you do? You say, well, I do this and that. And then you get around to talking about celebrate recovery. Or you start witnessing, same diff. And that's a giving that's appropriate. And on and on, there's something, I can see a lot of furrowed Browse as we thought about that. You're thinking about when you give and when you take. Here's the V in give. This is about victories shared. Let us give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merciful Father, the God from whom all help comes. He helps us in all our troubles so that we are able to help those who have all kinds of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from God. That's the flow. God helps you, and out you let it go into your environment, to the people around you. 
sharing our experiences and our victories. Uh, who was here last night for the baptism in the, in the evening service? There was a wonderful example of that. Kathleen was baptized last night, and also her, her two young sons. But Kathleen, when she's in the tank and she's reading, she's talking about a guy named George. And George came to Kathleen for physiotherapy, I gather. And so Kathleen was working with him in a professional capacity. But George was sharing the flow. Of the Spirit was moving through him. And he started to talk to her about God and about the nature of reality and eternity. And George died last year at age 88. But there was Kathleen being baptized as a Christian because of George and her sons. And she said that George, she, she figures there must be several hundred people that George shared and talked about. And we were all sitting there being inspired. It's like, wow, I mean, wish somebody followed George around with a video so we could, we could watch how he does it. Because sometimes we think, oh, how, how should I share? What should I talk about? We'll talk about that in a moment. The last in the acrostic is the E, an example in my actions. The Apostle John wrote in his first letter, probably wasn't his first letter, but it's the letter we have, that's our first letter. He said, my children, our love should not be just words and talk. It must be true love which shows itself in action. Now, the reason why he addressed the people in the letter as my children is because he was probably 90 years old when he wrote that letter. And he had been witnessing and sharing the gospel since he was a very young man. And notice that he emphasizes that love, a lot of us, we think that love is a feeling, yeah, but love is also an action. It's a doing, and he was reminding people about that. And James wrote something. You remember this? Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Be doers of the word. Take action. And my husband loves to talk about things he's going to do. And he's not here right now, so I'm going to tell a story on him. <laughs> Don't tell him. He's in the board meeting. But Jonathan will say, I'm going to hang up that mirror that's been sitting on the edge of the dining room table for several weeks. Or he'll say, I'm going to clean up all my papers and get all that filed that have been sitting beside his chair for weeks. Or he said, yeah, we, now that my cold is over, we should get back into singing at home. And what I think and sometimes say is, don't tell me about it, show me. Now you may think, well, that's kind of a strong thing to say to your husband. Believe me, we've been together long enough. He knows where I'm coming from. Don't tell me about it. Show me, because he loves to talk about it. But the doing is like... <sighs> if you've been in a relationship where one person is the doer and the other is the person who's, whose now is this big, and your now is this big, yeah, it's interesting. So the idea is to be a doer of the word, to be an example. If somebody cuts you off in traffic, do you react as a good Christian? Do you refrain from using the one finger salute or the Trudeau salute for those of you old enough to remember? When someone cuts you off and does a bonehead move, do you just send blessings to them? Because they need it. And that, that isn't really being an example to that person, but you're practicing. You know, on Sundays, a lot of the people who come here, they're the nod to God crowd. It's like I'll show up Sunday morning and okay, check mark. But we don't want to be 
the nod to God crowd on Sundays, and we don't want to be, oh, Monday night's recovery, and the rest of the week is just back to my normal stuff. We want to be models and examples and letting the Spirit flow through us, not get stagnant. Faith without works is like electricity without a light bulb to light it up. Faith without works is like gasoline without a car to combust and move. Faith without works is like rocket fuel and no rocket. That just reminds me, I just watched Apollo 13 on Netflix this week. Oh, it's my favorite movie. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's just people coming together and focusing to get the job done. So this is about the flow of giving. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. But this is about if you let the Spirit work through you, it's not stagnant, it's not blocked, then wonderful things will happen in your life. Good things falling into your lap. Wonderful things being shared, benefits of the people that you're helping and sharing with. I was looking for a water picture. Here's another one of those statements. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So how do you do that? Pastor Ron in here on Wednesday night, who was here for his Wednesday night class? Yeah, he talked about ambassadors, being ambassadors. And this came up when I was prepping for this lesson. We are all ambassadors for the kingdom. And some of you are ambassadors in camouflage and don't want anybody to know. But you'll become bolder and bolder and bolder. What can you do? Here's one thing an ambassador can do, is just start a conversation. Tell someone a friend or a family member, a work colleague, or the doctor, or your lawyer, how you are benefiting from your experience in Celebrate Recovery. Now, you don't need to do a whole share group share. Just say, I've had these wonderful benefits. Go for the benefits. You might say, I used to have a terrible problem with anger management, but now I'm so much calmer and more focused, and I did it through with God's help at Celebrate Recovery. So that's like one sentence. And you never know whose ears are going to go doing, and they're going to ask for more information. So start conversations. That's an action. That's being a doer of the word and not a hearer of the word. Another interesting way to start a conversation is to just say to somebody, just ask them a question, what do you think happens when you die? And then just sit back and listen. And you will hear what their worldview is, and then you will understand where you can begin to share a little bit of your experience of becoming a Christian and how that's benefiting you. Something to always avoid, at least at the beginning, is to say, you should become a Christian. You're a sinner. You should come to celebrate recovery because you got issues. You don't tell them. You talk about your benefits, your experience, and they'll get intrigued. And the right, at the right time, in the right place, they'll ask for more. They'll ask for more information. Somewhere in the Gospels it says some, some plant and some water and some harvest. You might be the planter, you might be the waterer, you might be the harvester, but we're all working together. So that's one way to let the flow come through you out into the world. Just say, oh, yeah, I go to this thing called Celebrate Recovery, it's really great. And by the way, here's a card. 
What a coincidence that there's a card on your clipboard. <laughs> and there's more in the cafe. Let that card be in your, your wallet or your purse and do something with it. Don't let it just dwell in there in the dark, which comes to the next point. Plant some seeds. Leave CR brochures or the little cards on bulletin boards. You can be the stealth poster that puts up the CR brochure, if there's room, on the company bulletin board, and then somebody will see it or plant the card. Leave it at the restaurant table when you, when you leave the money or when you've finished uh, the transaction of paying for your dinner, just leave a card. Somebody will see it. You'll change lives that way. The clerk at the grocery store, just here's a card. Thanks for the groceries, goodbye. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Well, suddenly you will just have this overwhelming feeling, give this person a card, give this person a card, give this person a card. Will you obey? Will you obey? Yes, no, maybe. Is it scary to give out a card? No. No, well, you're giving them something. The doctor is another good one. Boy, doctors hear all kinds of things. You probably give your doctor a stack of the brochures. Here's another way to let the flow come through you. Get ready to do your testimony. We have begun to have more live testimonies here. Remember summer, a couple of weeks ago? So what would you say if you were up here at the podium giving your testimony? Yeah, It's quite safe behind here. And you'll change lives. And it's your story. You don't need to get it all ready yet, but start writing down some ideas. What if somebody said to you, like, in, in, in three sentences, what's your testimony? If you were limited to three sentences, that would be hard because you'd have more to say by the time you got rolling. Pray for one another. I know there's lots of this that goes on in the small groups and outside of CR. Be an accountability partner. All that means is that you make friends with somebody else who's working on similar issues and you encourage each other and trade phone numbers. Maybe text each other, how are you doing? See you at CR on Monday night. Who here has already completed a step study? Hands up high, 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 high. You can all be sponsors. If you're in the step study now, get ready to be a sponsor. That means you're a little more directive in your relationship with somebody who needs some guidance, you can tell them what to do and get on their case if they don't. And it's very useful for you as well. And here's the, the focus question for the groups tonight. What are some recent victories of your own that you could share with a newcomer or with the person sitting next to you in the airplane or with your doctor? as you're leaving, or with the waitress who has time to stand and chat with you for a while. What's a small or a large victory you could share in a sentence or two? And play with that in small groups tonight. I know some of you will say, well, I don't have any victories yet. But you're working on it. You're here. That's already a victory. There's a wonderful quote from Luke, Luke 8, 16. This is from the message version. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a wash tub or shoves it on the bed. No, you set it up on a lampstand so that those who enter the room can see their way. So if this is you, is your light shining or are you suppressing it? Is it shining or is there a basket over it? So think about that. How can you be a light in the world? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for working through all of us tonight. Let your Holy Spirit just gently guide and encourage each of us 
to speak a little more about our victories, about our progress. Help us to share and to be a light in the world as wherever we go, we are claiming territory for your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.